Alex did have quite an impressive run, um, or rather an impressive match against Dojin, but again, Dojin was a man on the mission. As you've talked about the, the sting of defeat, Dojin has been to, to great lengths, you know, getting just the second place in the Nationals, and I'm pretty sure he wants to be the eagle on top uh, this season. Okay, and yes, that is true. Now, uh, going uh, looking at how Mouts played this uh, this conference, um, he did uh, take a break from playing Nina to you know just to get Gandry into the picture. And yes, you are correct. He is going up against the Ultra Warrior Vermilion, and of course, the first Ultra Warrior into the lower bracket, or at least the first one we're going to introduce today. Uh, Vermilion. Now, Vermilion has been red hot. Hopefully, his Devil Jin will, of course, retain the title of the Crimson Reaper. He's been absolutely outstanding in the group stage, but he did have a bit of a shaky start um, at the beginning of the day, Ron. That is right. Indeed, he is the Crimson Reaper. He is the Red Death. He is electricity personified because of how he uses his Devil Jin. Exactly, and he is going to be absolutely electrifying, just like the uh, brackets we are about to show uh, shortly on the screen. I'm really excited how it has turned out for these players. We have Brent E. Crumouts uh, going up against Vermilion, uh, which we'll be seeing next. And of course, uh, Nature Lover going up against Maru. Now, the thing with the role brackets is that um, in the next few minutes, one of these players is going to end the playoffs run. Yikes. And again, you hate to see that happen. But if you look, if you pay attention, there is possible, there's a possibility of a team kill on both ends. So again, you have to be, one of you has to be Kane and one of you has to be Abel. So yikes. And you know, the, the interesting about, uh, the interesting uh, element to see in this um, of the top eight is yung way how the players are spread. Walang team kill sa simula eh. Yeah, it really Everything wasn't. Everything will happen, like for example, sa upper bracket, the team kill will only happen in the winner's finals. In the lower bracket, the team kill will only happen in the loser semifinals. So and, sobrang pantay-pantay. <laughs> and don't you think that just adds to the mental, uh, mental mental strain you know knowing that if you fall into losers you're, you're also uh you're also getting closer and closer to elimination from the tournament and you have the possibility of eliminating your uh, your own teammate or the other way around true true and um to to the viewers let me just um explain to you the the way these players are seated are based on their performance uh, through the conference hindi to pinlano like uh, yeah i'm gonna put you here against hindi hindi siya manually nilagay eh. It was based on how they performed, the points that they got, and that is how we ended up with this beautiful bracket. And, you know, just like I mentioned at the beginning of the day, it is going to be the end of someone's story. It's going to be a fairy tale ending or a nightmare. But yeah, yeah. it's going to be heartbreaking for someone, you know. It, it, the, the amount of hard work, the effort, and, and the time spent by these players training to get to this stage is no joke. And right about now, Nature, or rather uh, Vermilion, just stuck with his guns here, just went for the immediate Devil Jin. Mouts as well got, uh, went for the signature Nina pick. So it's going to be a, I would say, hmm, it's going to be a battle of uh, their anchors, definitely. They're not the, their mains. So yeah, um, they're they're fighting for their tournament lives from this point on. So, hindi na hindi na hindi biro. And it's only fitting for the Crimson Reaper to be the first one, or rather, the possibly the first one to eliminate Mouts. Or is Mouts gonna continue his hot streak from uh, from the previous tournament? It would be um, poetic for for the Reaper to be ripped. Right? Like, who is going to be taken out in this tournament? Who's the first one to go? It just so happens that, you know, this is the first match in the in the lower bracket that we are about to witness. It's between Mouse and Vermilion. 
that's, doesn't mean that ano, ah, if if you get eliminated from this tournament, it doesn't discredit the fact that you are a good player. It's just exactly. that, the, that the competition, the level of competition in this playoffs is really high. And again, just as Ron mentioned, it's not to discredit anyone, but this uh this entire roster, the entirety of the nationals, it's just one big sea of monsters, you know. Everybody is a Charybdis, everybody is a Sila, and just it just gets uh dangerous as the season progresses. And this is the culmination of all that evolution, you know. And like I mentioned, talking about evolution, Vermilion really wants to break out of that perennial third, second placer, you know. He really wants to take it all. He really wants that first major win. Uh definitely. And if for him to be able to do that, he needs to to destroy this wall that is standing in front of him in the in the prison of mouths so of course this is we we're talking about the coach of of the brand e pros he has been a he is a seasoned player he knows the ins and outs of the game and um, he's no pushover he really is it mouths is definitely one of the most mentally uh mentally untouchable players out there you know it's just so hard to catch him with shenanigans and it's so hard to throw him off his game plan when when he sets something he's gonna commit to it you know and that's also a testament to being a nina main now maining nina she has that wedding dress for a reason guys that's full-on commitment there it really isn't a joke <laughs> to play that oh, character yeah, yeah that, that that is true and um yeah we are about to witness the battle of the mains here mouth's mains and uh vermilion's main devil Jin. Here at the Dragon's Nest, um, an ode to, to Tekken 5. Ode to indeed, and I would have to say that uh, the OG Dragon's Nest had probably the best music in the entire series. My personal favorite, but right now Vermilion, all about favorites, went for the Hell Sweep here. Went for the uh, Steel Pedal Ender for Vermilion. Falling, okay. Trying to pressure Vermilion. There's Mouse with a chop. Mouse has his back against the wall though, and Vermillion with his wave of wave will just get incredibly dangerous here. Goes for the Oki Ender, down three to cap off the first round, and Vermillion looking a lot more loose compared to his uh, previous outing. You know, he's more comfortable in this pick, and you know what? He was able to take that round with that broken plate. Will he be able to continue and ride that momentum and eliminate Mouse once and for all? Mouth's just a very, very tricky opponent. Going for the double lows this time. Vermillion still trying to hang in there. Playing a bit more compact than usual. Oh, what a beautiful sidestep. But the down forward two doesn't connect. A Vermillion, oh, with the electric. That is the dreaded electric twin god fist of Vermillion. Look at the execution of this guy. Both players in the red, but Vermillion takes the second round. Again, Vermillion, the Crimson Reaper, he loves being in the red and just that burst of damage coming from that uh, last uh, closing seconds of the round, rather, just must leave Mouth to the star taste in his mouth. But again, Vermillion with the excellent execution and the excellent timing with a God Fist. Uh, a mistake for Mouth to be able to, you know, to pull off that back one, that chop, but here he is punishing the Hell Sweep with the launcher. Very aptly so, as Vermillion is... Well, the, both of these players are pretty much in the same amount of health. Just the most narrow thing can tip this very delicate balance. Mouth will get hit by a house sweep, so this could be big damage if this heaven, heaven denied will go on scale, and yes, it does! Oh my god, three straight rounds for Vermillion, he means business! This guy! You see how, you know, the, the, the execution of the electrics, the combos, all of them on point. Again, this is the determination that Vermillion is showing, you know. I think he finally realizes that he has a definite chance of taking the hardware for himself, you know. And kind of experimenting with that Zafina pick did knock him uh, a notch down a bit. But right now, it's going to be Devil Jin all the way. I think that's going to be my prediction for him. He's not going to sway away from this Devil Jin. And, and that is true. I mean, um, this is his main. This is his comfort pick. Um... You know, when whenever Vermillion chooses Devil Jin, and you know that he means business. He, he is he, he's taking everything seriously, the 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 mix-ups and everything, and uh, the, the the damaging combos that he will be bringing to the game is something that you have to watch out for. That back to one has definitely been a uh, ironically a godsend to Devil Jin's arsenal as it really really boosted his damage, especially on um his wall damage. 
Um, I would say prior to that, uh, prior to season three, he would normally go for Oki, uh, but this time around, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna go for damage. I'm gonna go for a million damage. Uh, si, si, ano, niya na yung damage. I mean, I'll, I'll figure it out later. I worry about that mix up later. For now, I wanna take, I wanna deal some damage. And right now, excuse me, Mount's going for the infinite stager, trying to uh, deny that damage. Yeah, because he wants. Um, we, we all know that uh, with with Nina in Mouts' uh, hand, he doesn't need walls to, to deal uh, as much damage. Not like uh, well, how how Vermillion uses walls. Exactly, and in a perfect world, if Mouts can consistently land those butterflies, Nina actually is one of the most uh, damaging open stage combos there. But right now, it's all about the pokes. That God Fist will get hit by a down forward too, though, and Mouts really laying on the pressure. Got that with those folks, and you're comfortable to see mounts with, with that lead. But then again, this is Vermillion, and just like that, he was able to deal that. That was a very weird combo. I'm not sure what he was thinking, but he was able to. He was able to connect it. I would have worked if it was second six, but right now we are in second seven. 17 seconds left on the clock as well. But this has been a match of absolute composure. But mounts with a big forward to one closed off the first round. I uh, thought he was going for a Mimosa, but then again, he continued with the 1 plus 2. Taking the first round, wasn't able to commit to the butterflies. A Vermillion going for a more compact game here, not a lot of Weibo pressure. But still trying to poke away at Mouth with Mouth. Oh, so sharp on that, uh, on that punish. And Vermillion is quite familiar that Mouth will be sidestepping to avoid the... Uh, the Wind God Fist in the Hell Sweeps, that's why he, he's been throwing those Rave Kicks. Oh to... my goodness! What round a two. round! Fight. And like you mentioned, Mouts loves to play compact, you know, and he does have the execution when he needs to, uh, when he needs to pull those um, multiple flaps out. But Vermillion right now is the one on the defensive. Normally you'd see him go on a Wave of Wave of Rampage, but that's not the case at all. With Mox, he'd rather have Vermillion. <laughs> nice mix up there. Uh, he would rather have Vermillion come to him and you know just retaliate with the with a counter. Oh, but those Godfists, they're coming in here. Vermillion going for the OK as well. Back four, but no no dice on that. Mouse trying to step the final move here. Vermillion still hot on his heels. And he didn't go for the whole um what? tsunami kick. He definitely didn't. But Vermillion, Ooh. oh, big crucial drop by Mouse, but it doesn't matter. He finishes it off with a downford one-two anyway. That would have been heartbreaking had he not able to to close it out. But yeah, he isn't a break of taking a a point for himself. Will he be able to? And that is the question. As Mouse is really turning up the heat here, Vermillion though still trying to uh, maintain his Crimson Reaper status, trying to time that God Fist tip range Hell Sweep, no full combo, but that uh, Demon Hoof. We'll still connect. You see the, the range of that hell sweep. Very well calculated by Vermillion. Had that whiff, it would have gone the other way. Vermillion trying to catch Mouts on a step here. Again, still trying to oppress with those electrics, but Mouts has been super sharp on this. That's minus 13, but Vermillion opted to go for the neutral on that delay catch. Vermillion so close to death, and Mouts catches a breath of fresh air as he t evens it out one apiece. He tried to force a mix up with the, the 50 50. Went for the Wild Rising 4. It's really surprising that it whiffed. Really was. And again, I think that was the infinite stage. That really was the pick that Mouse was going for. He understood that uh, Devil Jin's damage has been absolutely absurd with those walls. But speaking of the damage, it wouldn't surprise me at all for Vermillion to go for his home court, the Forgotten, Forgotten Realm. Realm. Yes, <laughs> of course. We we all know that that is the playground of Devil Jin. Uh, the amount of damage that Vermillion uh, has dealt in that stage is off the charts. And uh, yeah, like like you said, it's it won't be surprising if we go there next. And I feel like of Vermillion still kind of trying to balance out his offense and his defense because but or rather I think he's still trying to get in the groove of his offense because once we see Vermillion going it's such a hard train to stop you know that train has no brakes yes that is true but then again th this is this is Mouth's 
I think somehow I'm not I'm not saying completely, but somehow he has a plan. Uh, in the, in a way, he understands how Vermilion thinks. That's why he that's how he was able to get that that second match. And honestly, like Mouts is uh, I would say this weekend has been a bit of a throwback to Prime Mouts. You know, Mouts. I remember in his player highlight, he said that he's past his prime age, but the way he's been playing at this level of uh, consistency and competition is just, it's so crazy to think that this isn't even prime outs yet. Oh yeah, you would have, you would have loved to see uh, how, how Mouts played years ago. He was really good. He was really insane. I mean, he still has the chops. I, would, I don't actually believe that, you know, this is not his prime anymore. Just looking at the results. Fight. Ano pa yung ano niya? Ano pa yung ano pa yung prime, di ba? Exactly. He's been a consistent top eight. Mouse has had a few championships under his belt as well, and a big counter hit to boot just to add to his resume. He is gonna break this floor, denying Vermillion of that delicious damage that he's been craving for. Did you see that? He went for the OP. Went for the charge oh, blood bomb. Oh no. And ended with a wipe the floor combo to a rising back one. And Mouts really turning the buzzsaw on right now. And Vermillion is in the way. He has to get his going as well. Because, well, again, a Mouts with a full head of steam. Pretty, pretty Ooh. scary. Look at that. While rising to, to, uh, to a wind god, this gonna break that floor. Take it downstairs. Rising two to another heaven denied. And we were just talking about damage. Vermillion got those. He got that unlocked, you know. He got those. So as long as there are floors in this in this stage, there's one more floor to break. So who's gonna who's gonna break and who's gonna break it with whom? Exactly. And Vermillion is losing quite a lot of health here. Mouts is pretty much poised to take this round, but unless I curse him by accident, I hope. I did not. He's sliding into Vermillion's <laughs> legs right now, and the blonde bob. Round four. That set up from Mouse. He knew that uh, Vermillion is gonna push buttons and went for the power crush. Once again, that uh, is honestly quite a difficult task to connect a consistent combo with uh, Nina's magic four. But it doesn't matter as Vermillion is gonna take him to the wall. Damage will be scaled, but still putting him in a good. A great position there, Vermilion burning up just for a second there just to avoid the low. And, and good awareness there from Vermilion. He knew uh, the distance of the wall, knows what combo to do. And look at that, bad habit. Is he gonna go for another run? No, he goes for a down back to instead the skull splitter. But no skull shall be split today as Vermilion is remaining kosher. The third hit, not letting it rip. The down four as well, but the hell sweep. Oh, oh but it barely misses. Oh no. Able to take that. Great kick. Went for the broken plate instead. Broken plate, and it is going to be the final round of at least this set. Vermillion, he does have a head of steam for him. He does have momentum, and with that momentum, he will go low with a hell sweep. Look at that. Whoever wins this round has the lead. He has the advantage. One step. Uh, Want to further into the bracket. Oh, and that Oki has been really friendly to Vermillion! Beautiful electric wind god fist. Signature Vermillion there. You know, he was waiting for, for Mouths to whiff, and when he did, he was right there. Like the hunter that he is, that electric wind god fist, certainly on point, found its target. It's the chin of Nina Williams. Mout still has rather one more chance at uh, taking this away from Vermillion because certainly these are actually two very similar players you know they play very offensive uh, mindset characters and they're both uh, they're both buzz sauce once they get going that blender really hard to stop it's just that well it's sad to say goodbye to to mouths but he needs to to make things you know turn, turn things around he needs to tie things up and then I'm I'm not sure how he would do it because looking at how Vermillion plays right now, I, I don't see a scenario where in Mouts without turning things up wins this. Mouts does have to step up and like you mentioned, Vermillion is a man possessed right now. That electric was so clean. 
and his conversions have been on point as well. And you, you know, you could say that he truly is going Super Saiyan for the playoff. Well, he is the Visayan Super Saiyan, so uh, that alone is a testament of how well he plays and how he uses his characters. Uh, well, Mao still has an option. Would, should he go with another character or should he stay with, with a Nina pick? And in the regular season, it was so easy to say that uh, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't shy away from a character switch if your uh, if your main isn't working or if your sub isn't working. But we're in the playoffs, you know. It's a different atmosphere. You either stick with your guns, or you just kind of throw out that game plan and just switch it up completely. So what what Mao needs to do now? Because because Vermilion is just one win, one round or one point away from eliminating Mao. Uh, Mars ha- needs to sit down and rethink his strategy. Uh, check what made him lose the previous matches from Vermillion and uh, work from there. And again, the the, uh, the tone of the game, the tempo of these games have gone to a very, very tense. It's slow, but it's really tense. You can feel the tension in the air. You can almost cut it with a devil laser but right now we're back to infinite azure where mouse equalize it once can he do it again i mean this is where he got his his point so you know what let's try that again i'll bring you to infinite azure somewhere let's see how you you you'll do against my nina and it is gonna be a game of the neutrals here as there are no walls to bolster the damage and Vermilion chose the armor here to buckle down. He knows that Mautz gets that power up when he's at an infinite stage. Instead of going for the butterflies, he goes for the Oki here. Vermilion getting hit by the Ivory Cutter. And of course, Mautz has that freedom to move around and you know maneuver and do whatever shenanigan he has of his lead to deal damage and win rounds in this stage. Nina is definitely one of the slipper, uh, slippery characters in the game. As you can see, Mouth's trying to evade stuff with the uh, Hayashida step. But the down two, the uh, double dab, will finish it off. And Vermilion is going to be reeling from that one. And of course, that is one of the best blows of Nina. It has range and it hits low. So it also has a, a follow-up. Not so good though, but you know that down two alone is really, is really one of the best blows of Nina. Yep, he's still trying to fish for that counter down back too though, trying to catch Vermilion stepping, but Vermilion saw one too many whiffs, and another well-placed Godfist will bring the momentum in Vermilion's favor, and my goodness, that wave dash speed is out of this world. And the counter hit DF2 caught Mouth's pushing buttons, and what is he going to do now? He's in the red, there's the wipe the floor to a bad habit, tech roll, wait for a mix-up, what is he going to do? Bind whip! Yeah, to expand the blue here. 15 seconds left on the clock. All Vermillion has to do is to weather the storm. Mouth has to make Ooh. something happen, but the Demon Hoof is going to clip him. And again, Vermillion stays alive. And he's feeling it. You know, you see those Weibu Weibu coming in. Again, this pressure and this tension is insurmountable at this point in time. Vermillion getting answered back. With a down four, but the binding whip did not. Uh, Mouse didn't let it rip. That is hit confirmable. The demon paw, though. Of course, the thong, but oh, and the whip slide there. Ballsy while rising too by Vermillion here. Is he gonna go for the full five? He gets four. But that is gonna be reasonable damage as it puts Mouse into fatal, uh, fatal territory. And Vermillion, one away from putting the Bren Epro to sleep. The Crimson Reaper is hungry. He knew that Mouse is gonna go for a side step, uh, and he he blocked it with a DF one too, the twin lancer. And Vermillion, bit of a drop there, but doesn't matter. The momentum is still continuing as Mouse ducks that electric. Mouse will try and answer back here, fishing for a big hit. And a bit uncharacteristic, considering uh, he is more patient with this offense. But there's only 30 seconds left on the clock run. I mean, Vermillion is at match point and he's taking his sweet time, but he's taking it too much. Ma- giving Mouse that room to breathe and, uh, you know, a chance for a comeback. And Mouse, he equalizes it once more. He's not going down with a no fight, but Vermillion once again burning up. The down three train is coming, but Mouse couldn't punish the second one. Another one just to add for mental damage. But Mouse's lows are coming in as well. 
tried to go for a rising one for a uh, for the punish, but instead of going for a rising four, that is very scary. Okay, that is why he didn't go for a wild rising four. I think I got it figured out now. Interestingly enough, Vermillion, that's not the first time we've seen him punish a slide with only a wild rising four. What the oh hell, Sleep is gonna come in? This is gonna be so close. It's gonna be up to the Oki, or is this gonna scale? Yes, it does. Mouse is still alive, but not for any longer as the down forward won by Vermillion. Well put Mouth in his grave. Congratulations to Signal Ultra Warriors Vermillion, staying alive in the Nationals.